video time hey guys so uh, i thought i'd do another update um nothing nothing too interesting here just a couple of things uh, i got uh, fsd beta version 12.3 installed um i think it was last week or the weekend before and uh it's really different you know i, I told myself i would never get fsd ever again and um because I've paid for it three times. I've paid for FSD three times on different Teslas. And this is actually the fourth time I've had it because I did an FSD transfer between my Model S, my refreshed Model S and this car. Um, the car has been, again, doing great. I have no issues, no paint issues, no rattles, no defects of any kind. Uh, again, I bought my car before the $23,000 price drop. So I have a feeling they had more time to build these cars back then um from order date to delivery was maybe two weeks at most now i know it's it's months right um but what's interesting is that because of the fsd transfer um i priced out a model x plaid um two days ago and it was within thousand dollars of what i paid um i think this was 114 or something like that and i think the new one uh, came out to like a hundred or something or 101 or something plus 12,000 for FSD. So if I didn't transfer F FSD, I would have been screwed, but, um, it's about the same and same with my son's car. I, I read that there was a, uh, a price drop on the model Y. So I checked his, we got his model Y in December, uh, because they were offering that six months free supercharging and he's really taken advantage of that. I think he's put close to 6,000 miles on it since then, uh, free supercharging. Um, but we had ordered his, uh, I, I found a new one on the lot in Southern California. So we just went down and got it. And I think it was maybe $3,000 cheaper to buy it that way than to order one. And there was no difference. It was like a two week wait to order one versus uh, picking one up that was on the lot. And I, and I called ahead. They said the car had just arrived like the day before. So the Model Y inventory is super fluid. Like when I was looking at cars, they would be uh, available uh, in the evening and then by morning it'd be gone, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, we had saved enough money that when I priced the new Y with the price drop a couple days ago when I priced this car, uh, it came out to within a thousand dollars again. So no big deal. It worked out just fine. Um, Okay, so as far as updates, I got FSD Beta 12.3, and this is the one that has the neural net AI integrated in it from, from head to toe, and it is a vastly different animal. I told myself I would never get uh, FSD ever again because I paid for it three times, transferred it once, and I only got it one in my Model S uh, as a Beta to try, and it sucked. The, with the yoke especially the thing was like jittery like 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 this kind of jittery super jittery um and uh it didn't do a very good job with turns it wouldn't keep a lane um just miserable it wasn't ready it was really really unsafe uh with 12.3 totally different thing um it's perfectly smooth doing turns um it's it's as if someone who knows how to drive was driving the car um, the only issues I've had is once it crossed over a double yellow, uh, getting onto a freeway. Um, and, uh, it seems to bias more towards the left side of the lane. And I find that really uncomfortable, especially when I'm uh, up against the center divider, whether it's a, like a planter, like this kind of center divider or an actual wall, it really hugs the left part of the lane. I feel like I'm within six inches to a foot of the lane, which is a really uncomfortable feeling when a car is driving for you. And I'm looking at the screen and I can see the, the left side tires are hugging that blue line on the left. And there's like two or three feet of lane on the right side. So I don't know why it's doing that. I, I wish. Uh, ever since I've had autopilot, I've always wished that there was some kind of control, you know, where it, just like when you adjust your speed limit, plus or minus so many miles an hour, I, I wish there was a way to bias it to the left or the right of the lane. So it, it kind of stays on one side because, you know, not everybody drives in the center. Not everybody feels comfortable in the center of the lane or to the left of the lane or to the right of the lane. I, I prefer not to be that close to the wall or the curb because uh, I don't want to mess up my wheels. Um, so I've got close to 19,000 miles on this. Um, I, I probably have, geez, I would say over 100 and, 
50,000 miles of, of autopilot under my belt. And this FSD is, is my God, it's, it's just a totally different animal. I am totally, I, I would get FSD again for sure, even if I had to pay for it. It works really well. Um, the only drawback is it doesn't like you looking at your nav screen. It doesn't like you looking down at your dog. It doesn't, it, it just really has problems. You know, like, I guess that's how it should be, right? The nanny is, is very obtrusive. Um, and I, I don't have a problem with that. It, it's fine, you know. But, um, so let's see. As far as updates, uh, everything is great. My, my, oh, my efficiency. Okay, let's talk about efficiency. This car is supposed to get 330-something miles of range at 100%. I'm getting close to 290-something at 100%. Um, that's stated, not actual. So what the screen says and what you actually get is, what you actually get is way less. But um, uh, the efficiency of this car versus the Model S is just horrendous. I can't imagine what a, uh, a Cybertruck is like. Um, 411 watt hours per mile is my average, which is huge. I think with my Model S, it was more like 345. So um, even though it has the same battery as the S, same charging system, same everything, it charges at a charge rate of 34 miles an hour. And, and that's just an hour of charge equals 34 miles because that's the efficiency of the car. It's not charging at 34 miles an hour. It's just that much charge takes you 34 miles in an hour. So the Model S, uh, one hour of charge was about 43, 44 miles. And the, uh, I don't remember what the, the three or the Y, I had a three, per, uh, three, what do they call it? Performance. And my son has a Y dual motor and I, I don't know what those charge at. But this is a super, super inefficient car. Um, some of it has to do with the 22s. Uh, I know that if you get the 20s, it's, it's more efficient. Um, but, you know, you can't argue with 22s. I mean, come on. Those are beautiful. Um, I am getting that damage on the doors that I showed you. Oh, one more thing. I have clear bra on the front of this car. Uh, paint protection film. And get this. Everybody should have paint protection film. Okay, and on my Model S, I went about about up to here. Uh, I think they called it like the the partial hood. And um, but check this out. This is all PPF, uh, all PPF. So uh, right here, you see this doozy, that little dinger, right there, went all the way through the PPF. Whatever that was was a stone, and I. Don't know if it got the paint or not, but it's it's pretty nasty. Okay, anyways, uh, everybody should get PPF, you know, the minivan hood and all that. I know you guys hate it when I say that, but uh, yeah. And then uh, uh, again on the, uh, the doors, let me shut this door. I'm going out of town again, so I have stuff in the car. But, uh, oh, actually it's easier to see if my doors are partially open. Here we go. Let me open this again. Stop it. Oops. There we go. Okay. You guys see all that? Can you guys see all that? This is a freshly washed car. All of that damage. Those are rock chips. That's what I was talking about. So I think you're, you're pretty safe if you cover from like this part up to here you can probably just do like a you know because that's what the model s comes with model s comes factory with a piece of uh clear bra right here it comes from here to here and nobody ever notices that it's there so um i think you, you're safe doing that if you wanted to well you somebody said they were going to go up to the belt line and go across but it stops right here so there's no real i mean it's kind of hard to do that so i would say just do the whole door uh the rear is fine um that's pretty much it so that's my update. FSD beta is pretty damn awesome. Uh, 19,000 miles on this car, it's doing fantastic. I haven't heard anything about the Cyber Beast order. Um, it's supposed to be end of, the, uh, end of 2024. So um, hopefully we'll see what happens. And again, uh, if the uh, Cyber Beast doesn't have autopilot available by the time it's ready to be picked up, I probably will not pick it up because I don't wanna be in that beta testing mode. Uh, I had that problem with the Model S. Uh, I, I guess I had that problem with this car. Uh, it, it has hardware 4, no ultrasonic sensors, so the doors 
pop, but they don't open all the way. Oh, that was another thing. I'm kind of scatterbrained here. So while this car was updating with the FSD 12.3 update, uh, I was sitting in the car because it takes 50 minutes. I went in to grab some coffee. I expected it to be done. It wasn't done. So I just sat in the car. And while I was in the car, while I was updating, I noticed that when I opened the door, the door opened all the way. It didn't just pop, it opened all the way. So um, this is the norm. Oh, didn't close for me. So that's the norm. Watch, it will pop. About 10 inches or so. But when I was in the car, it opened all the way and it stopped short of touching the car next to me. So that means all of the hardware is in place. The car is perfectly able to do it, but for some reason they have not activated it. As soon as the update was finished, it started doing the popping thing. But while it was updating, it was doing full auto present. So we'll see what happens. I, I wish they would do that sooner than later. But again, that's what I'm talking about, the beta testing mode. Uh, I don't like that, uh, especially if it's going to be like autopilot and park assist, uh, like on the Cybertruck now. That would really suck. Uh, these doors are just kind of an inconvenience because whenever you pop the door, it pushes back on you. It has like a break to keep the door from opening any further because of the mass of the door. It tries to stop it. So if you pop it and you right away try to open the door, it pushes back pretty strong. And I can't stand that. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. He's got to wait a little, but I'm super impatient. Um, the other thing, too, is when I had the Model S, I got the updated Model S. I was the second delivery out of Burbank. Uh, after Jay Leno. So he got his first, I got mine. And so they were fresh, they were new. And um, they were not ready. So when I got my car, it was supposed to have serious satellite radio. Uh, it didn't have satellite for a couple months. In fact, I called Tesla to find out what was going on. They scanned my VIN and looked at my car and they said, you don't even have a satellite radio receiver in your car. It looks like they didn't install it. And I said, what? It's standard. And so I just kind of, you know, whatever. I said, I, I'll make an appointment then. And I never got around to it. And all of a sudden, one day, two months later, satellite started working. Same thing with the subwoofer. The subwoofer was not active on delivery. It took two or three months for the subwoofer to finally become activated. And I thought, man, this, this sound system sucks. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, it was supposed to have a tilty screen that these have now. That when it was first released, they advertised specifically in the uh, uh, online content you know advertising the car that it would have a tilting screen towards the passenger towards the driver the motors weren't even installed so that wasn't even a retrofit option it's something they never were able to turn on um, the newer cars yes they have that um, they of course did the uh, let's see when I first got my car I got the old s headlights and the old s tail lights about six months into deliveries they changed the lights to the matrix lights and the, and the new tail lights, so they look much better. Uh, the headlights on the Model S, uh, refreshed Model S, the initial batch, sucked. They were like the worst. The, the technology on those was even worse than the current Model 3, Model Y. They, they had hot spots, they were not evenly illuminated. They're just your standard uh, LED lights. These are perfect. These, you know, you can see them moving and they're, they're just perfect. These, head, these headlights are so awesome, the Matrix lights. Um, what other feature did I not have in my car? Ah, uh, shoot, I forgot. Oh, this car. This car doesn't have summon. It doesn't have, uh, um, what is it? I, I guess it's summon, where you can move your car forward and back like six inches or one in foot or whatever you want by holding the, the button. This car doesn't have that. And that's nice when you're, you know, cleaning your wheels and you want to move your car up like, you know, a foot to clean the, the bottom part of the wheel that's against the, the street. Um, or, or back it out of the garage. I can't do any of that because it doesn't have that. So anyways, that's my update. I'm um, sorry about the rambling. Uh, I, I don't plan any of these videos. I just kind of, you know, talk about what's what I've experienced. And, and, you know, the latest for me has been the FSD 12.3. That was the point of this uh, this video. And also my, my massive rock chip. That's like a super huge eyesore now. Man, that is just brutal. I don't know if it's in the paint. I, I don't. I can't tell, but it's kind of looking like it is. Ugh, nasty. Even with even with um, PPF. Okay, so I'll see you guys next time.